Um, excuse the jurors here, this is the hangover from the interior submission because um, the project that we're presenting today is the new headquarters for John Holland. Uh, it's in uh, a base building by uh, SJB on Flinders Street, uh, which is 180 Flinders Street, and John Holland have occupied the top three floors. John Holland's an established engineering company, 70 years of experience, originated in Victoria and is now working throughout Australia um, in infrastructure. Uh, last year they took it upon themselves, the year before they took it upon themselves to rebrand and really recast themselves as being not about bridges, roads, tunnels and uh, construction, but being about people and being about people to the extent that the tunnels that they build get people home faster to live their lives and to um, undertake the rest of their, um, their valuable time. So changing their image um, to being one about transforming lives was very much about also bringing themselves from two separated entities, uh, an ivory tower and their corporate headquarters in St Kilda Road and their engineering division and project divisions that were in Abbotsford, and bringing those two teams together to kind of get some efficiency and blend, blend their team. So we wanted very much to create for them an opportunity to see themselves as workers, but workers in a, in a natural environment and in a place that doesn't necessarily reflect one or the other of these two um, aspects. Um, we use these collages um, essentially to win the job, really to talk about this difference between nature and engineering structure and, and, and um, the kind of harmony. Um, they wanted a home that they could bring their engineers and contractors into without um, people feeling nervous about muddy boots uh, and people feeling nervous about coming into the city and feeling out of place. And so it was very much about trying to build uh, a place where people, no matter that they were from the ivory tower or the coalface, were at the centre of the decisions that were being made. Um, the project's in the heart of Melbourne. It's a very dense and very different kind of location for John Holland than they'd ever been in before. St Kilda Road is quite corporate and disparate. Mm -hmm. Abbotsford is basically by the river. Suddenly they were going to be in the heart of everything that they're about and everything that they've built. And so we wanted very much to be able to make sure that their staff and their engineering teams and the clients and the people that they were bringing to their offices could see them as being at the heart of Melbourne. Um, that led us to a bit of a vision about sight lines. John Holland has built a lot of the major um, kind of, uh, and, their, and their legacy projects through Melbourne are quite extensive from the MCG, the City My Music Bowl, various projects that they've been constructing. We tried to make sure that they were connected with and the views from this um, building were very much um, able to link out into all of their main kind of um, areas and keep them connected to that space. This is their reception level that is uh, arriving at level nine in between their two floors, level 10 and level eight as well. Um, so you can see that the views here really are about connecting all the time into Melbourne, into that place that sits at the centre of everything that they do uh, and making sure that their, um, their people were connected to the outcomes of their work. Journey and flow drove us um, in, our, in our thinking, not only because it's the way that John Holland are trying to change their strategy as being transforming lives rather than digging tunnels. It was about being able to make sure that their teams on their way around the office were able to intersect with different kinds of exposure and different kinds of conditions within those spaces, different teams and different people uh, along the way. This is the base building condition. It's a very rigorous car park driven grid. Um, and we wanted to be able to change that up. It was quite, um, quite over the top and bringing some of these valent angles, bringing some of the angles that crisscross between these and sort of start to challenge the nature of that underlying grid to the degree that we could really build a project that had um, streets and axes and an almost urban condition in it so that you'd be able to find um, new and quite different areas where intersections and junctions and different kinds of conditions would be driven by these axial views that we were able to create through the project. So at some of these intersections and around all of these primary routes, we were able to convince them to curve their, curve their thinking and increase the flow around the space and to reduce those kind of stop-start moments and also to um, make sure that there was a really clear language around what was public and what were the, the meeting rooms and where the workspaces were inside the, inside the centres. And so these axes really create these kind of urban intersections, if you will. The project's built around an atrium. Uh, this is the existing base building atrium and it originally had no um, entries out into it. It was literally a light well. 
and what our proposition was to create these veranda spaces, incursions into our net level area, rather than just banging a stair in with a door at the bottom and a door at the top. By creating these veranda spaces, we're able to actually create a kind of a liminal condition between the inside of the office and the outside of the office. These um, verandas, as we called them, became new meeting spaces. They became ably, uh, uh, ably, ably challenged people were still able to enjoy that atrium space, roll out, take part in it. Uh, we installed fans to make sure that it actually felt like you were going outside. We've actually had to install no smoking signs to make sure that people don't think they're outside and light up a durry on the way to the next floor. Um, so you can see that these stairs don't take you from a place and deliver you to the same place on a level above or below. They deliver you to a new part of the office and it's that journey thinking that drove this circulatory kind of thinking inside the space. Two minutes, working and gathering. So this was their org chart that they gave us and we said, that's crap, this is a real org chart. Org charts for us are really not just about who's in charge of who, but how do you work. This is the world's first ever org chart about a railway in America. So we remapped their teams into these much more clustered groups so that we could start to understand how their engineering teams would work together and how we could actually get their building tunnelling development teams to start to be laid out into the, into the building so that we could achieve this thing which is this kind of analogue search, the search that you do when you find the thing you're not looking for that's next to the thing you hunted. Um, and the base building plan again, this is our overlay, that's how we then started to lay those teams and meeting spaces together uh, and a final plan on what that was. So there's lots and lots of different kinds of working conditions, lots of different gathering spaces, meeting rooms, and formal meeting rooms and informal gathering spaces that draw you through. The boardroom and it's um, quite vesica Pisces plectrum shape to take, the, uh, to take the leader out of the mix and keep everybody connected. And it's mirrored in the ceiling to really set up a new orientation for the space. So the ceiling, um, is really a navigational tool like the stars used to be. That was the ceiling. It's, um, it was overwhelmingly um, um, Brazil. Uh, and this is what we did, which is really about trying to create this sense of um, clouds and, and, and kind of a reflection of the pathways. So where there's workplace, there's always these clouds of ceiling tiles. And where there are corridors and runways, there's always this <coughs> these um, ceiling battens that let you actually navigate between those two conditions. And so the ceiling itself becomes the best way to wayfind because you're actually always looking to it to know where your um, answers are. Wellbeing, the place is riddled with green star requirements. They're a big corporate. They've got a, they've got a lot of um, requirements into that. It's a five star green star project when they're rating it at the moment. All the leather's vegan, all the chains are plastic. Um, it's very much about being able to connect people through movement, through connection to plants and biophilia and daylight to play, it's an important part of work, particularly in those teams, and also to obviously ergonomics and functionality and being able to pause, hydrate and reconnect to yourself. You'll excuse that I'm in all of these pictures because it was a COVID lockdown at the time. I managed to get myself a get out of jail free card. We do have a couple of people in some show shots now, but it's about nourishment and transforming lives and uh, bringing them into a new home. Thanks.